first, this idea of you have to be an employee is pushed so hard that you don't even think about becoming an entrepreneur. But when you look at the Bible as an example, God never says, go out and be an employee. As a matter of fact, there's only four people in the Bible, masters, laborers, servants, and slaves. Mm -hmm. For time's sake, we know what a master is and a slave is. But that leaves us with servants and laborers. Mm -hmm. Matthew tells us you cannot be a servant to God and money. So we need to understand what a servant is. A servant showed up for a 12-hour shift. They showed up when the master said so. They got to go home when the master said so. If they saved up enough money, they could buy their freedom. Today we call that retirement. Mm -hmm. And they could be their masters forever, put the mark in the year. Today we call that pension and tenure. We are servants to money through our employment. Right. So, and your solution to this is to, you know, get out of that, the, get out of the job, find a way to go into business for yourself engage with freedom and through that engage more with your family is that correct oh absolutely absolutely because when you look at families today the average family spends 49 minutes a day together you take out kids you're down to 19 minutes with husband and wife well we always complain about the 50 to 60 percent divorce rate yet we don't put two and two together and say hey maybe it's because you're only spending 19 minutes a day together as a matter of fact the number one place for a divorce is work it's employment because the number one place for an affair is employment. Well, I thought the Bible told us to flee temptation. So we're purposely going where most affairs happen? That doesn't make sense. And then we're coming home, spending 19 minutes together. And then once the kids grow up, we say, well, I don't feel like I know you anymore. Of course you don't, because you didn't build a life together. Now, why do you think so many people are afraid to break these chains and really go out and strike it out on their own with their own business? Well, I think we've been taught that employment is what you're supposed to do. Go to school, get good grades, go to college, get more good grades, get a job, and that's the answer. First, it's never been the answer to anybody. Your odds of success are actually lower that way. We love to think entrepreneurship is risky. Employment is far more riskier statistically. Well, risky but, of ending up in a dead end? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You have a 98% chance of being dead or broke by your 65th birthday if you go the way of employment. You have an 80% failure rate in business, so automatically you're up 18%. I don't know if you're a mathematician or an economist, but holy cow, you're up 18% already. But in addition to that, when you look at, well, is it dangerous? In 1929, I have a textbook, Nate, it's that thick. Seventh graders were taught to start businesses. Chapter one, starting your business. Chapter two, setting up distribution. Chapter three, how to price your product. Well, today, seventh grade textbooks are that thick, and it's hundreds of pages of repetition, repetition. So we're taught to fear the very thing that brings freedom. You know, and, and that, that resonates with me, you know, as a, as a fellow Christian, fellow dad, I, I moonlight as a small business owner and a fellow bearded man. I feel like we're just kind of like misplaced Kindred brothers here. Spirits. One thing you also point out in the book is that working too much is actually a form of greed oh, yeah. rather than just having a lot of wealth. And can you expand on that difference there? Yeah, we love to think of greed as, you know, Gordon Gecko from Wall Street or the Monopoly guy, right? But greed is really what? Placing money as an importance above the other things that are supposed to be important. So when you tell me, well, church is important to me, my family is important to me, my spouse, my, my friends in the community, all those things are more important than money, yet you will move four hours away for five more dollars an hour, I'm sorry, but you're greedy. And a lot of people love to object to that because that hurts a little bit. Yeah. But the reality is that you're doing it for money. You're giving up the important things for money. And just because you don't have a lot, because the objection is, well, I, I need to make more to feed my family. No, you need to do something smarter to feed your family. And if you did that, you'd actually spend more time with the family you think you're working so hard to stay with. And so is this real? Is this an answer for everyone, you think? Is, is entrepreneurship the way that, that everyone needs to go? It is. We have this confusion in America between entrepreneurship and small business ownership. Small business owners are the people who work 50, 80, 100 hours a week can say, oh, wow, I was better off staying employed. Entrepreneurship does it actually in reverse. Entrepreneurship says, how much do I make? How much do I need to make in the hours that I have available? And what 20, 30, or 50 businesses are applicable to what I personally need? It's kind of like in school. The easiest way to do a maze was backwards. <laughs> so it's the same thing with entrepreneurship. So yes, it's applicable for everybody. I don't care if you're 95 or 19. I don't care if you're from Yale or jail. It doesn't matter. But more importantly, it's for this country.
If we get back to an entrepreneurship-based economy in this country, we don't have to worry about, well, is my conservative message resonating with people? So what do you say to the guy who says, you know, I've got a 38 to 40 hour a week job, I've got mm -hmm. good benefits, I've got a, sta a stable pay, I spend a lot of time with my kids, a sure. lot of time with my wife, and then when I'm not there, I'm volunteering at church and I'm in the pews every Sunday. Oh, what, should that, what do you think that guy needs to do? Uh, they're lying someplace in that equation. Because you can't spend 40 hours a week at work, an hour drive to and from, uh, 20 minutes showering, and all that other sort of stuff and say, I'm spending enough time with my wife. If you look at the top four reasons for divorce, they are all connected to you are not spending enough time with your wife. And then we lie to ourselves and say, well, I love what I do. Liar. Liar. If you love your job more than you love your wife, if you love your job more than you love your faith, if you love your job more than you love your kids, you need to see a shrink because your priorities are out of whack. We've convinced ourselves that we love what we do, so that way we don't feel guilty when we're spending seven minutes with our kid and we have to say, sorry, sweetie, I'm missing the ball game again. Wow, you've given us all a lot to think about, Josh. I really appreciate it. So where can people, if they want to read more, where can they find out, find the book? <laughs> well, right now they feel like I just punched them in the throat, but that's okay. <laughs> they can go find out more at joshtully.com and purplemonkeygarage.com.